as an example then of using the vector menu. Whether it saves an awful lot of time, that's maybe debatable, but taking this as an example here we are. There's two points A and B, and C divides it in the ratio of 1 to 5, so C is about here, so cutting it in the ratio of 1 to 5. Not an awful lot of calculation, how could you do that using the vector menu? Well, switching it on, select mode, vectors is under 8, and then immediately it gives you the option of entering 3, again there's only 3, you can only store 3 vectors in the memory in this. Press 1 and dimension it with 3, so I've got a 3 dimensional vector. So I'll put in, even though those are the coordinates, I'm just going to input that as a position vector. So I've got 1 equals negative 5 equals 7 equals, and once that last equals has been entered, verified by the seven appearing below, I can safely press all clear and it's stored in there. Go to B. Now to do B, I'll enter it via the vector button here. So pressing the vector button comes up with the vector menu. Not a lot in it. The first two are to do with just inputting vectors, dimensioning them, and then entering the data, dimension them, either making them two or three dimensions. Three vectors, an answer, which is a handy thing, and the dot product, and that's all that's in there. Well, first of all, one, dimension it. So I've already got a vector A stored, so I want to do a vector B. So that means I choose two, select its size, press one to select a three-dimensional vector, then enter it 13, 19, negative 5. 13, 19, negative 5. Press equals, make sure it's all in, and then I can clear it. Now, both of those are stored in there. Now, unfortunately, there isn't any quick way of getting that division there. I'll just have to enter that manually, just by using the formula that you know, or by working out that displacement A, B, and taking a fraction of it. But I'll just use the formula. The formula that you know would be to get the position vector of C, if there's six parts altogether, it's going to be one-sixth of, and that will be five times A plus B. So, how would you enter that? Well, the first thing is this. <clears throat> you can't enter one-sixth this way, just as one divided by six. If you do one divided by six, and then times anything, just by showing, but for instance, putting a vector into the vector menu, select three to pull out A, just to see if you can do a sixth of A, press equals, it comes up error. You can't enter it like that. If you want to enter a fraction, I'll have to enter it via the fraction button. But in this mode, the fraction button doesn't display the fraction numerator denominator, it does it side by side. The very first thing that comes up is the division. So I'll have to clear that. If I want to enter a six, I'll have to do one fraction button six. Now we can press the opening parenthesis bracket for 5a plus b. So 5a would just be 5 times, don't need the time sign. Press enter the menu, pick out the vector, that was 3, plus enter the vectors, pull out b, that was 4, close the bracket, press equals, and it comes up with this. 3, negative 1, 5. So c would have been... 3, negative 1, 5, which means that C is the point 3, negative 1, 5. Fairly straightforward. Did it save an awful lot of time? Don't really know, but it would check your arithmetic. Another common problem is finding the angle between two vectors. So try that. So try this. Three points A, B, C, and I want to know, not that, I want to know, what's the size of angle A, B, C? Now that means I need to know the angle that radiate, the vectors that radiate from B. So I need to know B, A, and BC. <clears throat> now what I can do is I can store those three position vectors. So I'll switch it on, press mode, select vectors, that's eight, and then I can enter A, B and C. So enter vector A, press one, dimension it, I want it a three-dimensional matrix, put the numbers, two, three, five, make sure that five's entered before you clear it. To enter B, just now go to the vector menu itself, that was shift five, and I'll need to dimension it before I use it. Don't just try and call up vector B, it'll just come up with nothing, error. So press one, select two for vector B, dimension it, that's a three dimensional one, five, negative one, six, now I can enter the data, five, negative one, six. Make sure you've pressed equals and that six appears there. Now I can clear it. C, go into the vectors, I want to dimension it first. I want vector C, so that's three. I want it to be three dimensional, so I press one. And then enter the data, one, five, negative four. One, five, 
negative 4. I should press equals, clear. Now they're all stored in there. If I want to call any of them up, I just need to go into that menu. Shift 5, if I want vector B 4, pull it out, there it is, 5, negative 1, 6. Now if I want B A, that's going to be A minus B. I can do this. I can go into the menu, pull out vector A, that was number 3, subtract, go into the vectors, pull out vector B, that was number 4, there is vector A, press equals, and that would be the result. The result of that is going to be negative 3, 4, negative 1. Now, that's actually stored clearer. That was the result of the last calculation, so that should be stored the same way as answer in the vector answer. So, shift menu, number 6 says vector answer, so if I press 6, vector answer should come up with this. Vector answer, and there it is, negative 3, 4, negative 1. Now, that's, I actually want to use them rather than the original ones. Now, I've not worked out BC yet, and I've only got three vectors to play with, but what I could do is I could store that under A. I don't need A anymore. And what you can do is this now. Now that I've got the vector answer displayed, if it wasn't displayed, I'll just scrub it. If it wasn't displayed, I would just call it up. Shift, vector function, vector menu, number six. Vector answer, there it is. I can store it into position A, B, or C using these store positions with the red letters A, B, C. Now it goes on D, E, F, but you can only use the first three of the vectors. So what I can do is I can do Shift, Store, that's above the button here, the Recall button, Shift, Store, and then just press directly either A, B, or C. Well, I'm not going to use A anymore, so I'll press A. That's it in there. I'll just check that, clear it all. Shift, Vector, Recall Vector A, that was 3, and that should now read this rather than the original one. And it does, negative 3, 4, negative 1, that's now gone. So I can do the same with the other one. If I want the vector BC, that'll be C minus B. Go into the vectors, that's vector 5 for C, minus, go into the vectors, pull out 4 for B, equals, there's its answer, now there's its answer. So I can now store that, say, in position C. So shift store. C is the red letter above the hyperbolic part. So that should be stored there. If you want to check that, shift vector. C was number 5. Well, of course, I didn't keep that to, to show, but I can show I've got a different answer now. So instead of 1, 5, I've now got negative 1, 6, negative 10. So that's these two stored. Now, unfortunately, there's not a button that just does the angle straight away. That'd be great if I just had these two vectors and then I just pressed angle between them and it would give me a no. So I'll have to think through it myself. But other things you could do is, I haven't put this one in properly yet. If those were three points in a plane, I could find the vector normal to the plane by using the cross product. Because I've got these two vectors, the two line segments for those parts, just by doing this. Shift, vector. Call out 3, that was vector A, the new one, that was the BA. And for the cross product, you just press times. Shift into the vectors, pull out C, that was number 5. Press equals, and there you are, there's a the cross product. Negative 34, negative 26, negative 2. Dot products within that, if I want the dot product of them, I would just say shift vector, call out A, that was a 3. Shift vector, number 7 says dot and it puts a dot in. Shift vector, call out C, that was number 5, and there's the dot product. Press equals and it come to 46. Dot product's 46, scalar product. So if I wanted to work out the angle, unfortunately I'm going to have to do that manually. I'm just going to have to think cos of ABC is just going to be BA dot BC over the length of BA times the length of BC. Now the length, first of all, in the menu there wasn't a length one, it's actually on the screen on the, the main casing here, it's that the abs above the hyperbolic again. So that if I wanted, for instance, the length of this vector here, 3, 4, 1, the length of the vector I called A, I would just do shift, abs, and it comes up with absolute, pop into the vectors to pull out A, and A was number 3, Close the bracket, press equals, and I get this big decimal, 5.09, and that's one thing it doesn't do. 
if there is a third lurking about, it won't give you the thirds, it'll only give you a decimal for any irrational numbers, which is a wee bit annoying. Although it didn't matter particularly in that case, because that particular one was what, 9, 10, 26, and 26 didn't go very far anyway. Right, so how would you do all of this? Well, let's just clear all that. So if I wanted this, I could actually do inverse cos in one go if you wanted. But otherwise, what have I got? I've got BA times BC. Of course, I didn't write that one out, so I'd start off with this. So into the vectors, pull out A, that was number three. I want the dot product. Into the menu again, number seven. Back into the vectors again, dip back into that bag and pull out C, that was number five. And then I want that divided by, I could have had that in a bracket, but it doesn't matter. Divided by, you know, I want these lengths, so that's the abs. So shift, abs, which means the length of, now I want the vector A again. Pop into the vector bag, pull out vector A, that was number three. Better close that bracket. Multiplied by, I don't need the times, just do shift, shift, absolute. Pop back into the vector bag. Pull out vector C, that was number five. Better close that bracket. And the other bracket, and then press equals. And I've got this, 0 0.7317, etc, etc. Check if that, it doesn't look as if it's rational. I can't see the beginnings of any repetition yet. But you can still use the SD button just to check it. And it just comes back up the same. So there wasn't any rational, simple rational one for that. And then it'll just be inverse cos of that. Shift, cos, normal answer. The answer is there. And out it comes, 42.96, etc, 42.968, blah, blah, 42, oh, 43.0 degrees. Well, those are the vector functions. Handy or not, they're quite time consuming, but they do at least do all the arithmetic for you. You could always do that if you had time to check it. One quite quick one is the cross product, though. There. <coughs>